All right, so we're gonna be checking out some Travis Barker drum beats. These are five that I really think um, define a lot about his style. Anytime we look at drummers, like I've said before, I don't just like to look at uh, individual drum groups. I like to look at different songs, different drum beats, and then I like to put that together and what it tells me about that player. Now you can download this sheet music at a pinned comment. There's a pinned comment below and there's a link in the video description. So go ahead and do that um, so that you can uh, follow along with it if you want to. Let's check out this first one now. Just so you'll know, um, I, I, I came up on uh, punk rock and uh, especially the pop punk of the 90s was really uh, what I was loving when I was coming up. And so um, Travis Barker was a huge part of that. Now, uh, I did focus on his time with Blink-182 specifically. These five grooves come from that time. So just kind of a disclaimer there. All right, let's check this out. The first song is going to be Dumpweed. And this is gonna be at the, about the 22nd mark. Uh, and it is gonna be at 200 BPM. A lot of these, the problem is not that they're so overly complex. It's just they're so fast, all right? So this one is going to be, uh, for all intents and purposes, a pretty regular drum beat, but it's just, it's it's quite fast, all right? So the drum beat is going to be one and on the kick drum, two and on the snare drum. Then we have four on the snare drum, and then it goes into the next measure. The second measure, one and on the kick drum, two on the snare drum, and then four here, on the tom. So all of that together sounds like this. Three and four and Then we need to add what the hi-hat is doing. Hi-hat has eighth notes, and there's a couple of opens that you need to really pay attention to, uh, specifically the length that he opens them. Whenever you're playing these slower, is gonna be more exaggerated than when it goes faster. So if he opens it for an eighth note, or if he opens it for an entire quarter note at a slow tempo, that really matters. Faster tempo, it kind of gets shoved together. All right, so let's check this out. He has eighth notes here on the hi-hat, and in measure one, we're opening it on the and of three and closing it on the downbeat of four. So that's gonna go, Now let's look at that second measure. The second measure again is gonna go one and two E and a three and, and we close it on four. So it's gonna go Now that's, that's at a very slow tempo, so let's put this up to 200 BPM and see what it really sounds like up to tempo. So the second drum groove is going to be from the song Feeling This. I could break apart so many grooves from this song because there's a lot of fun ones in this song. And this one is a blast to play live. This is one that goes over well live if you want to put any of the stuff if you're in a cover band or whatever, you want to put any uh, pop punk in your set list. People do know this one. And it's really fun to play live, especially the opening groove. I'm just, there's four or five grooves in this one that are really fun. So uh, this specific groove, I don't want to get it wrong, comes at the 44 second mark. And it's 180 BPM. Uh, and it's a variation of the hands alternating with 16th notes, so a groove like this. Okay, so it's a variation of that. The kick drum comes on one and the and of three. The snare drum is accented on two and the and of four. 
The left hand plays all of the E's and the U's, okay? But the right hand does not all play all of the, the downbeats and the upbeats, if that makes sense, okay? So we're gonna have here on the, the hi-hat, we're gonna open it with the kick drum. So it's gonna go Then on three, three, eight, ah, four, we close the hi-hat on four. Okay, so I know that's, that's, let's string that together so we can see what that sounds like. Remember, opening and closing the hi-hats at slower tempos is a little bit more tricky because some of them he leaves open longer. That last hi-hat open on the and of three, he leaves open for a full eighth note, whereas the first one, he closes it pretty much immediately. So it's gonna go, Now again, not overly hard, right? It's the tempo. The tempo is what makes this one harder and getting those subdivisions right at that tempo. So let's take this at the full 180 BPM. The thing to pay attention to is the ghost notes. You don't want all the notes even. You want those ghost notes. That's really what's gonna propel this groove. All right, now time for probably the hardest groove in this lesson. This one is gonna be from the song Anthem Part Two, and it sneaks in there right about the 46 second mark. He flies into it, he's in there for just a second, and then he gets out of it. And this one is really moving. It's at 208 BPM, and that's the hard part about this one. Making it smooth at that BPM with all the things that's go that are going on is really hard. This is very much uh, typical of uh, Travis and what he does, and that is putting some really cool opening hi-hats, some cymbal bells, and some splash cymbals into an otherwise normal groove. Now, first of all, we have to get the core of this groove. What is the core of this groove made of? It's going to be made of the kick drum pattern that's gonna go one and two and and three and four and one and two and three and four and While you're trying to smooth this out at full tempo, it's really important that you constantly refer back to this beat. Except way faster than that, right? Because we have, this is the thing that has to always stay con constant. That's always gotta stay constant. If that stays constant, it's gonna stay in the pocket. The rest can kind of float around there. All right, so what we have here is the floor tom uh, on the first six or seven eighth notes of that first measure. So it's gonna go. On two, there's another hit on the uh of two on the high tom. So it's gonna go. Then on the upbeat of um, beat four, we have a ride cymbal bell. So it's gonna go. Again, not real challenging at 100 BPM, really challenging at 208 BPM. Now we go to the next measure, it's gonna be empty with the floor tom. The floor tom comes on the and of four. Other than that, we're gonna leave the floor tom alone. So it's gonna go. Then we have three on the kick drum.
So if we put those two measures together, Now, it's gonna really challenge your ability to hit to hit the bell of the ride cymbal accurately as well. Uh, it's really important that we keep that kick and left hand going strong. So I do all of the auxiliary hits with my right hand. Something you can do to help smooth this out is put the click on and do two bars of time with this groove and two bars of time with just regular eighth notes here on the hi-hat as a kind of a check pattern to make sure you're staying in the pocket. So here's what that would look like. Okay, so we go back and forth between those two to make sure that they stay in the pocket. It gets more important as you get on up into BPM. As well, working through this at high BPMs like that, start at a BPM you can do and then move up uh, just a few BPMs at a time, no more than five BPMs at a time, and that way you will be able to play this uh, at the tempo eventually. And one more trick that I'll do with fast grooves like this, I often strive to play them five to 10 BPM faster than I actually need to, so that whenever I go to play them at the actual tempo, I've already played them faster, so it's not a it's not a problem. I don't feel rushed. I don't feel like I'm just trying to hang in there, uh, and and I'm I can comfortably sit at that BPM and put it in the pocket. Next we have the equivalent of a ballad by as close as you're gonna get to a ballad with Blink-182, that's Adam's song. And at about the, about the 16 second mark, a lot of you already know what group I'm talking about. I first heard that and I'm like, that is an ingenious groove for a slow song like this. It's really just kind of a slow burn of a groove and it incorporates a lot of the elements that we just uh, used in the in the groove from Anthem Part 2. Now, what I will say is um, he uses, I think it's like a china at the beginning. He hits that very lightly either once or twice at the beginning of, of every other measure. I'm gonna use this splash cymbal just because I don't have one set up, but just know that that first hit or two hits, it alternates uh, over here is going to be on that uh, that China symbol or a stacker. I can't really tell what it is. Uh, so what we're going to do is we have uh, the first measure. We'll just kind of pick this apart. It has bells. It has opening uh, of the hi-hat and everything. So let's check this out. It's going to go. Then we have two here, the upbeat of two here on the ride symbol bell. We open three and we close it on four. So Then he has two sextuplets at the end of that. So it's gonna go. That whole first measure together. Now you'll notice that I hit this one time, two times, and then the next time I play it through, I hit it one time because he alternates it when he's playing in there. He improvs just a little bit within this groove. The second measure of this is going to be with the floor tom, it's gonna go one and two and three and four and in the kick drum, and the floor tom's gonna follow with that. And then on four, it goes, All that together. Three and four and 
Then on beat one, we have one end of the kick drum, two on the snare drum. So very kind of repeating what uh, the first measure that we did. So it's gonna go. Then we have a snare drum with no floor tom, and then that, that same sextuplet pattern, but it goes from the high tom to the floor tom. So it goes. Then we go down here in the next measure, it's gonna go one and two, excuse me, one and two and three, and then he has and on a splash cymbal, four. Let me play all of those together just so you can hear them together. I know that was probably a little bit of a confusing explanation because it's a four bar groove. Three and four and. Let me play that at full tempo, and this one's gonna be slower than the others, 138. 138 is usually a quick tempo, but for him, it's a slower tempo. So again, this is as close to a ballad as you're gonna get with uh, Blink-182. And finally, uh, one of my favorite songs by them, it's called First Date, the video always cracked me up. Um, and as well, it's really fun to play live. This is one of my favorite grooves. It's from the breakdown in the middle of this, right around the one minute 53 mark. And again, this is gonna be at 90 BPM. Okay, so if we check this out, uh, it's going to, on the hi-hat, it's gonna be a halftime uh, style groove. On the hi-hat, we have one E and uh, then we open it on two. So. We close the hi-hat on three, we play, we play three and. On four, we open it again with a uh, four and. It's almost a throwback to kind of reggae roots there with that two and four accident on the kick drum. Now again, as with a lot of uh, Travis's grooves and Blink-182 grooves, it's not that they're so hard, it's just the uh, the tempo that they're, that they're at. So this is at 190 BPM, let's hear what that sounds like at full tempo. Hopefully this has told you a little bit about Travis Barker's drumming style. Leave me a comment. Let me know what your favorite uh, a song is that he plays on. I would love to dig into. I always get good, good uh, references from you all. So I would love to dig into some things that maybe I don't even know about that he's played on as well. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you have not. I've got new content coming every week. Ding that notifications bell so that you know whenever those uploads come. Let me know if you ever have any questions. Uh, that is what I am here for as well. If you ever need an organized way to see daily progress in your drum uh, practice time. The Drum Better Daily program over at stevensdrumshed.com will help you with that. 
But whatever you do, I'll see you here in the next video.